the blood yes. of your God is shed. Yes. Human blood. Yes. Human sacrifice. Not human blood. Oh yeah, God sacrificed in her case. Because most Christians I spoke to, they told me he was a man and that's the reason he died. But you came. Okay. You heard it wrong. No, no, no. Christian believes he was just a man. I didn't say just a man. Oh, I said it is a. Sound like it. No, I said what they are saying is that it is because he was a man he was able to die. No, but you are it, saying because he is God. Why would God, you like to isolate my opinions died. and make it seem because, as if I'm a minority no, no, when I'm not? Let me I didn't say you you're a minority. I said. Let me tell you. How it, your statement because, is different to theirs. No, That's all it's I'm not saying. because he's a man or because he's God. It's because he is the Lamb of God sent as a sacrifice to atone for the most. Mosaic law, like a, as a parallel. So the Mosaic law was if you sin, you must kill this lamb. And God knew that they couldn't keep those laws. None of them could keep them in. Where does it say in the Bible none of them can keep this law? No, imperfection. They can't keep them in. Yeah, but what do you mean in perfection? Do you I mean in entirety? Does so God require. Laws, okay. ordinances, and commandments cannot so you're telling me that God expects. Everyone. No. No, no listen, no listen to the question yeah. first, Kay. Does God actually require of everyone to keep the 613 laws to perfection in order to attain salvation? Did God ever make that make that statement? And if he did not make the statement, why do you apply this to everyone then? Okay. These are my answers to those three questions. One, yeah. God gave those commandments to be followed. He didn't give them as a maybe. He didn't say if you feel like it, yeah? He yeah. said, this is your law. I am your God. There is no other God yeah. and I am telling you. So as believers, both of us, I can accept without it being explicitly there that if God tells me you will do these things, I will do those things if I am able, if I am able. But because I have got no goodness or perfection in and of myself, those laws of works and the uh, prohibitions were there to bring me closer to God through works. Whereby the new covenant comes Just hold says, the new covenant tells me that by no means will any man be justified by works, lest any man should boast. It is by faith alone that you are saved, in Christ alone. Shall I show you what James actually said? Yeah, of course. James actually says it's by works. James James actually said that without works, sorry, without yeah, without works, uh, faith without works, faith without works is dead. Yes, the other way around. So you get the faith in Galatians. We're told that the Holy Spirit conforms you to the image of Christ, and once you are conformed or continually being reformed into the image, then obviously you don't want to break God's commandments. Nobody's putting them aside. But Hebrew Israelites and Jews, they don't believe in salvation by blood or forgiveness by the sacrifice of another. Whereas the Quran says one cannot take the burden of another, yes. and I take that to mean sin. Yes. You see what I mean? So, yes. so that's where you maybe agree with the So Jewish what James said, let's read what James says. So James in uh, in the book of James uh, chapter 2 verse 14 to 17 says, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Okay. Yes? Because earlier you said yeah, yeah, faith, faith saves you yes, but here James is saying the other way around. Yeah, Paul says so James, James is basically asking this uh, question if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? By your fruits you will know them. Let him finish. This. Let's finish the statement what he says. Can the faith save him? And he goes further to say, he says, if a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself if it does not have works, it's dead. Okay, so can I answer that in two points? Yeah, go on. One point would be you said, so can faith alone say hypothetical? If somebody um, receives salvation on their deathbed, they literally don't move, they accept yeah. Christ, they receive salvation, yeah. they have salvation without any works. Yeah. That's an so exception, you know? Yes. That's yes, not the rule. Of course. That's so not the rule. My answer would be, by your fruits will you know them. The Holy Spirit produces works, not as a means to salvation. You cannot be saved by works. But did you understand James' statement? I did. It was a question what? that he okay. made. No, no, what is it's it? not a statement, it's a question. No, he made a asking. statement. Did you hear it? Shall yeah. I read it again? If you like. Okay. Because it's very clear. It says, for example, if a poor man came to you, yes, he has yeah, no clothes to wear yeah. and he has no food. And you just tell him, okay, go be warm. No, no, hear me out. Okay, please. Yes. Please, it's very important. Because this statement of James actually hits the nail on the head. And he says that just by you saying good works to a poor man, it's not something that is going to fill him, yes, fill his stomach, who is hungry, or cloth him when he has no clothes to wear, yes? 
it doesn't work like that. You actually yes. have to give him food yes. and you have to give him clothes and yes. that is your works and which will save you. It's not just your faith that, okay, you have this uh, intention that he might be warm even though you don't give him any clothes and then he might not go hungry even though you don't give him any. Okay. It's not just your intention. You actually have to implement yes. those works. And yes. wait, wait, it says in, in Revelation. save you. Say, no, no, it's both. It's both. No. Works and faith, both of them go hand in hand. Yes, they go hand in hand because... Not works, one. Listen, if a... If a That's exactly an, what Islam says as well. If, no, if yes. an atheist does good works until the end of and their no, no days, faith. They will not be saved. Even if they, they come to faith, it won't be the works that Which is exactly them. what I said. Both have to be there. Faith and works. But the good works mean nothing. They literally, it says in a different No, no. Verse. Good works without faith means nothing. Exactly. However, with faith and, and no works means without, nothing as well. Because if you have faith in Christ who told you the poor will always be with you. If somebody wants your um, something, give them something else. Go an extra mile. Do all these things. Exactly. Love them. So maybe we are you. talking about the same thing yes. in a different it's, way. Because I mean, what James... Avail you no, no. I said both are important. They're important. Both? For salvation, only faith. No, 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 no. That's yes. not true. This is exactly what James says here. Let's read what yeah, Revelation says. And I saw the dead great and small, standing before the throne, yeah. and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. Yeah. The dead were judged according to what they had done, uh -huh. as recorded in the books. What they had done is actually the works. And this is in Revelation chapter 20, yeah. verse 12. Now, both James and in the book of Revelation, it shows the importance of the works. And in another words, it says the Father looks at everyone's works. Again, telling you the importance of work. It's not just faith. I said both are important. So if you just have faith and you're not doing any work, it's not something that's going to be accepted of you. And if you have only works but no faith like the atheist you uh, mentioned, then again it will fail you. That's the reason both the niyyah, the faith, and the belief in Allah and the one God, and also the works, the good deeds you do, both are important. So I am suggesting to you that the good works come as a result of the faith. Because a selfish man, had, without faith, has no need to overcome his own selfishness. And that's why I said both are important. Exactly. Just important. like you said, the, important, the, the good works come from the faith. Faith, yes. You have no grace, and it is by grace that you are saved. That's why I said both. Okay, I'm not disputing yeah, what you're okay, saying. So that's I'm disputing. saying both are important, yes, and this is are. quite important like, that like we look at both rather than Someone one. Who's just about to die, yes. who receives salvation, is in no way lesser in the kingdom. Okay. Because of a so lack now of work. let's go back to the limitation. Christmas. You know, you mentioned. Christmas. No, but well, we already know that you don't have anything definitive in the Bible about Christmas in terms of dates. In the nativity itself is only in the book of Matthew. It's all why didn't anybody Quran, else say? What are you talking about? Really? Yes. You mean just the birth of Jesus? Yes, that's called the nativity. Okay, if you want to call that nativity, yeah. that's fine, but we yeah. still don't have the date. So when you say only Matthew, you have to include the Quran as well. No, but if you're going to believe from the Quran, then you should also reject... I don't believe from the Quran. Exactly, so don't bring I'm it in there. No, but you're a Muslim, so I want yeah, you I know. to know... But when, it's not when only as Muslims, we do not celebrate even the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the way the Christians do for the birth of Jesus Christ. Nobody okay? celebrates a birth the way Christians do on the birth of Jesus Christ. Everyone would know about it. But today Christmas is not the birth of Christ, you know that. Obviously. <laughs> exactly. So I agree with Every you. No Christ one celebrates celebrate it like that. Yes. Christ. Now, the birth of Christ today, the 25th of December, has become a commercialized... Yes. What do you say? It's, it's become commercialized in the sense that today, all these large corporations, they make mega bucks from yes. this so-called cele uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus, but not really celebrating the birth of Jesus. Yeah. It has just become a date on a calendar yes, when people are looking forward to a holiday and a lot of sales maybe. And this commercial, uh, what do you say, this uh, big large corporations, they love this date, not because of Jesus' birth. So Christmas, the spirit of Christmas is diluted. It's, it's, it's probably gone a long time ago. Today, Santa Claus has now become more, what do you say, prominent than Jesus Christ. If you ask me, true, the amount of time the Santa Claus has been in, in on that's our screens, Coke, that's the influence in, of Coca Cola, in, in, not the influence. <laughs> not just Coca Cola. Of it's all it's all these corporations. Santa. Exactly, that's yeah. what I meant. So all these corporations, they basically want to portray Santa Claus everywhere because they believe that he brings presents. And guess where the they parents get the presents from? From the large corporations. So obviously. They will Sorry, promote him rather than Jesus. To, there, we have a younger, um, like, so if yeah. there may well be, if I, I don't, I can't shatter dreams like that. I just don't. You actually know. believe in no, Santa Claus? No, when there are children around, I would fight. Okay, these are Muslim children. I'm sure I, I they don't, don't believe in this. I don't. 
Sorry? I don't believe in Santa. Okay. You heard that? I did hear that. So now. that little girl is saying she doesn't believe in Santa. Wow. Look, there are many little girls who are not Muslims who don't believe in Santa or the Tooth Fairy but either. There are many that do. But there are many who do. But that's a lie that the parents are spreading. Do you think they should what, the stop? Tooth fairy. And the Santa Claus. Do you think the parents should stop you, okay, spreading this lies? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a genuine answer. Go on. I believe You're a that, parent, right? Uh, yes, That's I why am, it's yes. fair to ask you. I believe that for children to grow up into adults who can believe in concepts like love and mercy and justice and faith, all things we cannot see, I believe that those small falsehoods like encourage an imagination and, and grasping the unseen nature of the world. Because if we were purely materialist and only believed the evidence of our own eyes, we would all be in trouble. So I think that justice and mercy and faith and love are unseen attributes of a loving God and therefore... And where does Santa fit in there? It's a story for children in order for them to believe in, in supernatural things. Let, let me ask you something. So that's my answer. Okay, let me ask you something. If I was in your place yeah. and I was actually a Christian, You'd be I would, my rent I would, my I would instead, of, instead of relying on stories of lies like Santa Claus, I would rather you give would the story... about Mohammed going up on a donkey to Sa heaven. Look, I did not disturb no, you when you were talking. You. You're doing it again. Oh, yeah. When you talked, yes. I kept quiet. Okay. I expect the same courtesy from you. Okay, so I wouldn't, if I was a parent, I would definitely not use lies or stories which are lies to to basically motivate my children and tell them stories of love, kindness, honesty, about miracles even. I would rather use stories, yes, from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the stories of the prophets, and there are quite a few. And I, I believe that they're also in the Bible. So I would not use some fat man coming down in the middle of a night in the, through the chimney, yes, and leaving gifts when those gifts were actually by the hard-earned money of the parents and not of some mysterious man coming down the chimney. Okay, now, wait, wait. I would use these examples from your scripture and I would use it, for, sorry, I personally would use it from my scriptures because I would not resort to lies to even motivate my kids. That is not something Islam teaches me. Yes? And that's why I'm saying parents today should realize that those children whom you have lied to, regardless of how good your intention was, when they grow up, they will look up and they will say you, mom, why did you tell us a lie? Many of them, when they realize Santa Claus is not real or the tooth fairy is not real, they're heartbroken. Little girls, little boys, they're heartbroken. You know why? Oh, you're, you're doing such a case. You're tugging at my heartstrings. No, but you know this is the fact. Yes, many of them, they grow up and they realize it's not true. It's not preached by the church. It's not a Christian. More reason not to include him in your fairy tales. Listen, I don't leave carrots out or mince pies. I Thank eat God. Them myself. No, no, yes. no, they're there. I just eat them myself. <laughs> So, so you still keep them? You keep them and you tell them this is for the Santa? No, no, no. I, my cookies. daughter's old enough to know. Cookies and, you, and milk. My daughter's old enough to know now. All right, good. The fact is that fairy tales and legends and the place where the sun sets and stories that can't be verified initially, unless we take the word of somebody, like a storyteller or somebody who's recounting actual facts, we have to have belief. Even which fairy tales? Are you saying the miracles which happen in the books of, in the scriptures are fairy tales? No, I'm not. But I'm saying okay. the sun. As long as you're not implying. No, I'm bringing something from the Quran, which I believe was like the tales of Alexander the Great, for example. It wasn't Alexander the Great. You have heard it all wrong. Do, do, what, heard, exactly my point. You should Where go and read. Wait a minute. Come on, let's you, to the chase. You, the no, no, first set? and foremost, on Christmas. I can tell you that as soon as you mention Alexander the Great, I know it is from hearsay. Okay. Am I, am I right? Oh, so your story... From here, say. No. I never met Mohammed. No. We got the Quran for your information. That's, that's so have you read the Quran, Kay? Have yes, you read the Quran? Yes. Right? So it is not hearsay then. It is from the Quran. But you see my point. It's not from a first-hand source. It's a second-hand source. Nothing from the Bible is the first-hand. No, I didn't claim it to be. So why would you expect the same... same? No, but why do you want the same standard... Uh, sorry, a different standard, standard from the Quran? I don't want that standard. Yeah. By the way, we have the Hadith, which are first... And some of them are wait, wait. Only we are first are hand. Hold on, hold on. Many are sahih. The first hand, the first hand hadith. We have the chain of narration, yeah. unlike the Bible. So even the ones which are weak hadiths, weak. You know what I mean by weak, not yeah. the sahih hadiths. Yeah. The ones which are uh, the the ones which are which are weak, daif. Yes. These even have a chain of narration going back yeah. to the Prophet but Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes, of course. The chain of narration is not verified. That's why they have been rendered as weak. Yes. However, we have the Sahih Hadith. So even though the Hadiths were collected in 200 years plus after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the chain of narration goes all the way to Prophet okay, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which clarifies to you that these sources, even though they come in uh, 
in chains of narration, they actually go back to the first hand source. Right, two things. Oh. Unlike the Bible. With the greatest respect, yeah. if somebody that I care not for their opinion is faithfully repeated and repeated throughout the centuries, and you pass it to your person and he pass, and you're all trustworthy, if I don't agree with the initial source, it avails me. Then you should tell us why you don't agree. Simple as that. I just, some of the things I find contestable. But the other question is, can, I'm just asking mm. genuinely, can Sahi um, have be rendered uh, less than with new information? Like, is there an ongoing process whereby some are elevated and some are... Do you see what I'm saying? Like, if someone had been slandered, like, half... No, I think, I think with, with regards to the hadith, yes, we have... Uh, the scholars have pretty much... Sealed the deal. Not... Well, they, they are pretty much... Um, what do you say? Categorized them as Sahih, Daif, and yeah. Maudu, the but ones which have been rejected. Now, I don't know of anyone where they have changed as more information came because most of the information which was available is already there and with regards we have the Quran itself the Quran is mutawatir yes mutawatir means something that has been agreed upon by a large consensus. number of people yes a consensus now this for this we have again sources which go back to the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do you have anything like that with regards to the Bible from the first century? Nothing. Obviously, the first century. You made a mistake there. You mean the second century, sure. No, the first century. The first century, the New Testament was Nothing at all, completed right? from, no, from around 55 to 95. So that's the first century. Do you mean... One that's what I meant. Some, yeah, so we do... So do you have anything from the first century? Yes. What? The New Testament. Give me one... The church Give me one manuscript from the first century. Uh, I, I, one of the Gospels was uh, AD 90. Which one? Do you know that the first no, century... No, I didn't ask you when it was. Listen, there's a difference between when it was. Do you mean the original text? I meant the, the original. Origi manuscripts. I meant the manuscripts. Yes, you. the manuscripts. The way the confidence with which you ask the question leads me, as a non-biblical scholar expert, to say suggest that possibly there aren't any. Well, just say I don't know. You're, you're more well, than I'm welcome to go, say I don't know. I'm going to go with your demeanor. No. Leads me to believe that. No, there no, no, no. No need to go with anything I portray. Well, I can go go with based on what I your like, knowledge. Because yes. I'm not deficient. Yeah. So even Bob the Builder, if you can ask him, he will be able to produce I'm anything from the first century. Phone, as as you can, you can. If that's your friend to ask, no problem. Your that that lifeline is open to you. <laughs> ask a friend. <laughs> okay. You can have ask a friend. 50-50. What's the third one? I ask the audience. Yeah, ask the audience. You can ask the audience. No problem. Any Christians here who can answer that question about the manuscripts? Trust me, there isn't anyone. Okay. okay? So does, you have you have people like James White who will tell you this. Possibility that they will be um, discovered archaeologically at some point. Doesn't yeah, but if they are not, the Dead then Sea then would not exist. Before, obviously. Yeah, even the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls are a thousand years after Moses. You know. So you have a gap of thousand years. Yeah. That still doesn't prove the Old Testament. It doesn't need to prove the It is. It is. It is. No, no, no. It shows a non-corruption. Do you know the language of the New Testament in what it was revealed in? Yes. Aramaic, Greek. But do you know? Are you sure? Which one? I'm sure it's Greek. Not Aramaic? That was the language of Jesus. It's a spoken language. It's not a written language. No. Aramaic. They have, it's, it's called the Peshitta. Like a cuneiform. Wait, wait. The Peshitta yep. is actually an Aramaic Bible. Okay. So don't tell me it's not written. No, I didn't say it's not actually, written. Actually, you did. You said it's not New written, Testament it's oral. That's the what you New said. The New Testament, as far as I know, it was in Greek. Originally yes. transmitted So, so origin. when you say originally... When I say transmitted, that's when exactly. you pick up Exactly. So on. the original language of the New Testament was? Greek. It was transmitted in so Greek. So Jesus actually preached in Greek. No, of course not. That's not so the let's original. Talk, you're talking about the do you know what the original language? means? I know what original means no, what no, no, Jesus no, 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 preached in. No, no, it doesn't. You it said does? the original language of a book, and the book was Greek. Yeah. Okay, so, the original language of Christ is a different question. Okay, so like, let's, let me rephrase the, Quran, the question. What language did Jesus preach in? Does not have a Bible before. Aramaic. So do you think the disciples... Okay, let me ask you. Did the disciples ever write it down? Ever write what down? His words. The teachings of Jesus. Uh, yes. So they wrote his words. So when they wrote his words, in which language? I believe Greek. Okay. Not them though. So in other words, they had to translate from Aramaic to Greek. After Paul, I believe when. Um, after the resurrection, yeah, I believe that they began to transmit it in Greek. The church, oh. the letters from Paul were not in Greek. He okay. was from Tarsus. So his letters would be in his own language, apart from when he used scribes, and they would be in the language, like a lingua franca, whomever they were sending those letters. So Aramaic or Hebrew? Or Greek. Or Greek. Yeah. Okay, so the original language, most likely from Jesus, when he preached the Gospels, was Aramaic. Yes. Okay, when you translate from Aramaic to Greek, do you think things got lost? 
in I translation? Think, I tell you what I think got lost in translation. Yeah. The same as with the Hebrew, yeah. is that there were plays on words. There were lots of puns or use of Like words the Son of God. No, no, like, no, no, that's not my point. Because the Hebrews understand different ways, son of God. When allegedly you never interrupt, so that would be my point. You know how that feels now, okay? I don't mind. I don't mind. Then don't stop so me. So my point <laughs> is that when there are puns, yeah. they can like the the funniness or the like the word play can be lost. Not puns, proverbs. No so puns. So certain things, literal like for puns. example, literal puns. No, no. Jokes played into the language. Well, yes. How many jokes are there in the New Testament? I'm not saying they're like <laughs> rollers on the floor. I'm not saying they're. Give me L one joke you remember. LMAO. It's okay. not. Like Give me one pun you remember. Go on. I'm not Hebrew. That's my point. You don't have to be Hebrew. That's my point. They must be translated into Greek. No, no, I'm saying there are plays on words. Okay, so now. And they will be lost. You see, you see the difference. You see the difference between. The same way that the name. Isho, which is the Eastern Syrian for um, Yeshua, mm -hmm. was mistranslated as Isa because it's just, mistranslated. You just, no, it's misheard. I By whom? Know. Well, Muhammad was the first person to call Christ Isa. Wait, wait. What do you think the Syriacs called him? Isho. No, Isho. It's not the same as Jesus, right? It's not the same which one is more clear? Let's, uh, let's, 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 let's see which one is Wait a bit. Let's see which one is closer. Isho and Isa. And Jesus, you tell me which is closer to Esau, Isa or Jesus? Yeshua. Yeah, so what is it? Yeshua, Esau. But what do you call Jesus? I call him Jesus. Exactly, my point. I can also call him Yeshua. So which is more closer, Esau or Isa? Or God Almighty. What is God's name in the New Testament? Yahweh. There's no Yahweh in the New Testament. His name is still Yahweh. He was given to Moses. Do you remember the question I asked you? What's the name of God? If you tell him to be quiet, maybe you can hear. Can you tell James to be quiet? James, be quiet. All right, no, we are not listening to you. Okay. So the name of God in the New Testament is what? Here is a joke here. His name remains the same as the Old Testament. Which is Yahweh. Where is that in the New Testament? In Deuteronomy. Show me. No, in the New Testament, what's his name? What's his name then? Yahweh. It's not there in the New Testament. Anywhere, Yahweh. I got you. Good. But it is there. When the angel says to Mary or whomever, he will be called Jesus. Because his name means Yahweh saves. Emmanuel. Jesus. Oh, Yahweh saves. Yes. So Yahweh saves. Who was he talking wait, about? Wait, the milk? Wait, wait a minute. Talking about the wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Actually, you're right. God saves Jesus on the yeah. cross. You see, even his names testify that. Okay? No, Yahweh so according to Islam, Yahweh God, saves. Yes, the angel, I'm going to The angel then goes okay. on to say, Can, because, Whoa, his name will be Yahweh saves because he was saved. will save his people. So no, but, he is Yahweh. But if he was Yahweh, then who dies on the cross? Yahweh? Yeshua. Did Yahweh die on the cross? Flesh. Flesh. God became. You know Flesh. these answers. But you're not. Why, why are you looking to answer? God Did Yahweh die? Just answered you. Did Yahweh die on the, the cross? The part of him that was Christ died and was resurrected, which is what so you So one third died? Get. Did one third die? Did it take? Did it take? Did the death take a hold of him for eternity? Did he or die did for he three he days and three nights? Yes. Who? Yahweh. Yeshua. Not Yahweh. Flesh. Flesh. So it's not the same man. Flesh. So did Yahweh die then? If you have a surname and I call you by your surname and then I say, but it wasn't Hashim. So it's a family then? Family of God? There are three. Yes, one family, John yeah, 5. Family seven. of God, Even right? you dispute it, it says there are You know, she actually used the family yeah, name. She said, witness. if your surname is this, yeah. that means you're talking about a family. If, if you're talking about a family, then that's fine. A family of God. Father, that is, that is exactly what the pagan Greeks believed in. A family of God. Wow, they were close uh, to the truth. Hercules, uh, uh, family of God. That's exactly my point. That's why Allah also said, I have All right, anyway, anyway, so we have no name of God in the Bible. No written language in the Bible. In the New Testament, the Bible. Now. The New Testament. Okay, New Testament. Okay, New Testament. Uh, yeah, thanks for correcting no, me. So, New Testament has no, no name of God. We don't know what original language. You see the difference between that and the Quran? In the Quran, still the original language Arabic. We still have the name of Allah and the 99 names. Yes, but they have been the given zero names. names don't include 99. Allah. Of course it does. Who told you don't? No, Who told you no? Of course it includes no, no, Allah. No, no, no. no, no it's the adjectives. No, no, no. Those 99 Allah. names are adjectives. The, beneficent the name, beneficent. the name of God, yeah. Allah, is one of the names of God. All the scholars will agree upon this. This is something which is unanimously agreed upon. Okay? Yes. No, 99. 99. They're called the names and attributes. 
Asma wa Sifat. So what's his other name that's not an attribute? By the way, you know Ar Rahman. Listen, listen. Ar Rahman. Yeah. It means mercy. Yeah. It means the most merciful. Yeah. And it's also the name of Allah. Do you not know this? So it's an attribute. It's both. Okay. So which ones are not an attribute? Like that which ones are not an attribute? All of them. All of them. Listen. All of them are names and attributes. Excellent. So Allah. So Muhammad and Allah. They're not talking to you guys. Get away from me. Yeah. I'm sorry. All of those names. Nine names yeah. are names yeah. and attributes. What does Allah mean? What is the Allah attribute? Is Allah means the one worthy Muhammad of worship. Oh, one. it doesn't mean the God. Is that? Yeah. It doesn't mean Al Ilah. Listen, listen. Al Ilah means the right. God. Uh -huh. Okay. And Allah is a constriction yeah. or a contraction. Yes. Of Allah. Right. Allah means the one who is the one who is worship, worthy of worship. Was and, that given to him? And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Allah the name Allah. Allah the name Allah. And the name you know Allah. In Elohim, Hebrew, yeah, yeah. Elo, no, not Elohim. It's the beginning, the No, no, the, the, the yeah. term Elo, the yeah. non, uh, what do you say, the non plural, as you can say, or the non, uh, the one without the, the respect of the I am. Yeah. The term Elo yeah. and Allah are not very dissimilar. Okay. Okay, the name of the name, sorry, the name of the prophet before he was born. Yeah. His father's name was Abdullah. Now, before Muhammad, listen, listen, uh, listen, Allah. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Christian Arabs and the Christian okay, Jews, yeah. they call God Allah. Okay, and it was okay? when they called him Allah, they mean the most high. No, they mean the most high. They just mean God. The most high. Okay? Now, you see, you see, we have the name of God in the Quran, but you have no name of God in the New Testament. Why did God not bless you with the name? Yahweh is not in the New Testament. You know that. Yahweh says it's not a name. Yahweh is very. Why is it in the new name? Which question you're going to answer? Which question you're going to answer? No, no, which question you're going to answer? Same topic. The name of God. Wait, listen to the question before you answer. The name of God in the New Testament. Do you have it? Yeah, wait. What is it? Let me ask you a question. No, no, don't ask me a question. You said you were going to answer. No, you said you were going to answer my question. No, no. We say Yeshua, but you say no. Hold on. No, you said you were going to answer my question. So, we ain't got the answer. Can I ask you a question now? You, have we you answered the question? The you don't have the answer. Yes, so, so in other words, question? you don't have the name of God in the New Testament. Yeah, we have. Okay, good. So now you can ask. Can I ask a question now? Yeah, go on. Yeah, Let me ask you. The three wise men, oh, where they came from? This? I don't know. These? Where did they come from? They I, came from I heard from the. Are you asking or telling me? Then let me answer then. Where did they come from? Let me answer. Based on the based on the Archbishop of Canterbury, this is a myth. So nobody knows who the Magi were. Why are you guys answering if you're asking me? Allow me to answer. Let me finish. Where so, they came from? where they came from uh -huh. itself is a mystery because right. we don't know who they were. All right, stop for a second. Some of them say so, so. they came from the east, okay. where in the east. All right. Some of them say from maybe India, I don't All right. know, All right. maybe from somewhere else okay. from the east. All right, wait, wait, okay, wait. So, they came from the east? Yeah. Where is the east of Jerusalem? East of Jerusalem? Yeah. I don't know, you tell that me many way, places. If you're looking at a map. It could be Arabia. Arabia. Yeah. Brilliant. So, let me ask you a question. They said that they came. Who's there? The, the wise men. They came to worship who? The Yeshua. king of the Jews. Yes, sure. Show Ola. me that. Ola. Yes. Show me where they yes. said they came Matthew to worship. Two, verse two. No, no, open and read yes. it. Yes. Matthew 2, verse 2. Yeah, read it. Yes. Why only Matthew is saying this? Why not? Hold hold that is the gospel. I'm going to ask you a question. Matthew 2, selectors. verse 2. He doesn't like if you have that. a Bible, they find it. Matthew, oh, two, Matthew 2, verse 2. Yeah, go right? on, read Look it. at it. Here, here what the wise men say. Yes. Wise men, which nobody knew them, who they were. They came from the east, east of Jerusalem, Arabia. We take it that east of Jerusalem, Arabia. East of Jerusalem could be anywhere east. It yes, doesn't have to right, be literally right. east. So say the Arabia. very first country. Arabia, Hold on, say Arabia. All right, say so they came from Arabia. But listen, this is a they... claim. Hold on, yes. not listen verified. No, wait a okay, go on, read it, read it. They came from the east, saying, yeah. "Where is he born, King of the Jews?" Yeah. King of the Jews. Of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east. They came from the east. And they came to worship him. Hold on a minute. What did you say? What did you say? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. They were pagans. Wait. They were worshiping a man. Guys, wait, wait. They came. Hold on. They came from Arabia. Yeah. They don't know any other religion. That's right. How do you know that? Hold on. How do you know they have no other religion? Let me finish. I will let you. Yeah, but these all claims. Hold on a minute. You called them pagans. Wait, wait, wait. Not me. The Archbishop and all the other people who have looked into this. Wait, wait, one minute. They didn't know about religion. They came from the east by default. And they are astrologers. They study stars. Ah, astrologers. Hold on. Hold on. 
Most so of the pagans came, worship. So they came from the east as pagan, uh -huh. but they came to Jerusalem uh -huh. because right. the star pointed them to Jerusalem. That's right. And they went to Herod the king, saying, "Where is he?" Born king of the Jews, yeah. because we've seen his star and yeah. we come oh, to worship him. Worship hold on, him. hold on, hold on. Where is this going? Who they came to worship? They came to worship the Messiah, Yeshua, right? Yes. And your point now, is? According to the Arabs, Jesus is not God. Yes. So, how the these Arabs astrologers today. come to worship a man who is not a God? Okay, so is that your question? Ah, is that your question? Is that your question? Wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. So he's not a god, but these astrologers, they never heard of any other religion. But they followed the star, pagan they were, but they came to worship a man that was not a god. Okay. Does that make sense? No. Go on. I'll let you talk now without interrupting. Without interrupting, I'll tell you. First and foremost, you are, you already admitted that they were pagans. Do you know anyone who says pagan? Astrologers. Yes. Anyone who says pagans don't have a religion, they should look at the Greeks, the Romans, the Indians, yes, all these pagans, all these, yes, the English, yes, the ones who invented Easter bunnies and all that, yes, all these pagans had a religion, so your point that they did not have a religion is completely and utterly false. Hold on, hold on, Second, hold on, hold on, no, no, I let you talk, I let you talk, it's my turn now, I let you talk, you said they were pagans, and they had no religion, no, now, you correct me after I finish, you correct, no, 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 I did not interrupt you, give me the same courtesy, now, Anyone who says pagans don't have a religion doesn't understand what a pagan is. Secondly, did they worship Jesus as a God Almighty? If they did, wait, wait, if they worship, if they worship Jesus as God Almighty, why did they leave after giving him the gifts? Anyone who worships a God and turns his back and goes back to where they came from. You know, if, if somebody if somebody came, if somebody came and recognized someone who is a deity, the last thing they want to do is leave the deity and go back. The reason the reason they went back, the reason they went back after worshipping him shows that they did not ultimately believe he was the almighty God. Now if they were if they were, hold on, I haven't finished yet. I haven't finished. None of the other gospel writers mentioned this narrative. Why? Sorry? Did, they, did anyone other than Matthew write this? You just said Matthew. Only Matthew, exactly. So the Matthew, wait, wait, earlier, earlier, I told this to Kay. Earlier, I, I told this to Kay. Matthew mentions many things which other people did not witness. For example, he witnessed, or at least he, he accounted that particular passage, where he says the saints woke up from their graves, hundreds of them, yes, and they went into the towns and into the people, and everyone saw them. You Guess what? The Neither Matthew, Hello. nor Luke, nor place. John, ever, world. ever. Why did these astrologers coming? come to worship a man that was not a god? Yeah. They yeah. never know, no. I've already religion. told you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Answer the question. I've already answered. Yeah. answered. Yeah. Now Why the reason they came to worship the question a man which you are to that answer. was not a god. Wait a minute. But they were not. I've answered you. When you say god, did you say he was god? They 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 was they God. They said, yes. where is he? Worship is what? Wait a minute. Where is Many people he? worship. David worship was worshipped. David in the Bible was worshipped. Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? We have seen King of the Jews is not God. And come King of the Jews is not God. King of the Jews is not God. Okay, this is what the Christians want you to believe. Go and ask the king. Go and ask the Jews whether they believe him to be the king. We came to worship him. Hold on a minute. They even rejected him as a Messiah. Let alone a king. Did Mohammed he not even believe him to be a Messiah? Okay. Did Mohammed ever claim worship? No. That means he's not a God, right? Did Jesus claim worship? Jesus, these did he, astrologers. Did he claim worship? He yes. didn't really these astrologers. You see the question you asked me? Listen. Did Muhammad claim worship? Now I'm asking him, did Jesus claim worship? Jesus, Jesus in John 73, wait, wait. Jesus in John 73 says, there is only one true God. He says the Father is the only true God. The one he doesn't want to answer. You know why you ask me this Muhammad to worship this man? By the way, stop hitting me. Alright? And wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, no. You oh, are not you, with all due respect, yes. are not sincere. Shall I tell you why? why? Because when you ask me, did Muhammad claim worship? Yes. Why didn't you ask the same? I for sure said Jesus is a better. Stop interrupting. More great. The stop interrupting. Is listen to the question. Oh, listen. And stop interrupting. Yeah. You said, did Muhammad ever claim to be to, to worship? Claim worship. Sorry, ever claim, claim worship. worship? What did I say? Because no. you said no. Good. Now I'm asking you the same. Hold on. Yeah. Now watch this, guys. See if he answers my question. Right. Did Jesus ever claim worship? 
He didn't rebuke. No, but the answer that I've answer. Answer. Wait, sorry, no, wait, wait a minute. Answer. You see how quickly I answered without you hesitating? Ready? Let's see if he does the same. Ready yeah, go on. Forget about Jesus. <laughs> I respect this. I respect this. That's why I said you're not sincere. I would rather talk to someone who's sincere than an insincere man like him. I'm right here. I think we finished discussing the same question. Anyway, thanks a lot. You see how, he, how I expose his insincerity? Oh. Because you see, Jesus said the only true God is. Jesus Christ. Jesus you see that on the Bible. No Here's a hint. It's in John 73. The answer is Happy holidays, everyone. Allah loves you. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too, so please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.